Welcome back to the Tomarosa. Here we are with another video about money. So a lot of uh, people have asked us, you know, how do you make money on a small dairy farm where you milk a couple of cows? And so we're going to share some ways that we're successful and uh, Stacy's going to get us started. Yeah, usually it's something like, how do you do what, <laughs> how do you do what you do with just, with just four cows? Right. And it's important to know it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. So now we're going to jump in a time machine and go back to the mid 1990s. It's a scary dark time. All right, it's dial up. You're getting on the internet. It's taking forever. <laughs> Nobody can use the phone in the house. And there's not a whole lot of websites to choose from, let alone dairy websites. But there, there was a dairy website in the 90s that, that I found and uh, it was uh, written by a gentleman out of Ohio, I believe and he talked about all these crazy things that you didn't see on dairies like grazing and seasonal and outwintering and and just all this craziness you didn't see on dairies at the time and it kind of blew my mind and that website's always stuck with me and one of the things he had on that website was a table and it had two columns and on the left side it was high high cost structure of dairying and on the right side was low cost structure of dairying and it made a, a comparison of things and uh, we'll put a link into the description uh, the website's long gone uh, but somebody did archive it on the website so we have that archived link and uh, check that out because it was it was an eye-opener for me way back when and it definitely was formative in uh, how we designed our dairy so yeah some of the things that uh, he had on that list that we also do are you know we don't have any uh, employees we do all the work ourselves we process our milk and uh, sell it directly so that allows us to control our milk price to some extent we also have matched our herd thus far with our land, except for last year because of the drought. But normally we do grazing and we harvest our own feed. We don't buy any grain, so we don't have to store grain or feed grain. And that's a very variable cost that um, is very expensive for a lot of dairy farmers. Uh, what are some other things we do that, oh, tractors. So we have an older uh, farm all cub tractor that we use, that you see us use a lot for things. We also have a newer 2013 uh, 40 horsepower tractor that is paid off that we bought because um, it has a front end loader. And we bought that new actually, but it was paid off before we even started dairying. Yeah, and uh, one thing we did, uh, Stacy uh, decided to finish out his term in the military. So that was, that was a hard decision to make. We bought our farm like 12 years ago. So I was only halfway through the military at the time, 10 years uh, in and 10 years until retirement. And, you know, it was a tough decision, you know, do we stay in and, uh, or do we get out and start farming right away? And we're really glad that we stayed in because the main benefit that I get from having retired from the military is healthcare, very reasonably priced healthcare. Uh, good health care covers a lot of stuff and including my emergency room visits um, but that was the main reason for me staying in the Coast Guard and we're definitely glad that we did and and the other thing is having that 10 year time to basically build up the farm let us do a lot of uh, the stuff on the farm without incurring debt it's kind of a pay-as-you-go uh, type thing so we do um, you know with the dairy we um, have a couple of loans you know we have a loan for the pasteurizer we have a loan for our truck and the most important thing to get out of this whole video is our, our brand new pickup truck that we really love <laughs> and appreciate and especially it's pulling power yeah so the main thing to get out of this video that everybody's going to want to know is you know we the the dairy the cows the milk that we sell the products we sell it pays for the dairy it pays for all the expenses and there is some left over to help pay with other household expenses but um, the way we do that is we have our milk that we sell for six dollars uh, a half gallon we also started making other value-added products like cheese and yogurt and we were yogurt yogurt is very high value right because we charge uh, six dollars for a quarter yogurt and it's a one-to-one -one. so if you have a gallon of milk you know you add the um, probiotics and then 
it becomes a gallon of yogurt and we sell it in quarts. So four quarts times six is $24 for basically that gallon of milk with a little bit of probiotics, which aren't that expensive. So, um, and it has a really long shelf life. So it's another way of thinking, you know, how, how can you have this product last longer and have higher value? So you do that with yogurt, you do that with cheese, um, fresh milk, you know, we make and we, we have to bottle and we have to sell uh, really regularly. It has to, you know, you, you bottle it, you sell it, it's time to bottle again, it's time to sell again. High so, turnover. High turnover. <laughs> so we love it because we love our customers and they really love um, the milk that our cows provide. But we do see that you do need to diver diversify, you know, you need to have if you want to um, be able to get good return, it's better if you can diversify and have longer shelf life. And then for us being seasonal, oh, I'm sorry, what were you going to oh, say? Oh, well, and on diversification, I mean, there, we have other enterprises here on the farm. So, you know, this last year we sold some beef uh, because we have the steers. We raise them ourselves and then uh, sell them. And, you know, it's not a huge money maker, but we've sold some eggs. And so... I make milk soap still. And yeah, sell it. and she she does uh, milk soap. So um, you know, I think diversification is is important. And you know, on our farm farm, that's what it looks like. For other farms, it could be during the winter they're cutting wood, or they're doing uh, on farm classes, or I mean, there's lots of different ways to diversify. And and that's been what farms have looked like historically. I mean, you know, even a hundred years ago. It was not common to see a farm just be self-sufficient. They they diversified. They they cut wood in the in the winter. You know, they'd hire out with mobile threshing crews or or whatnot. So, um, this idea that your farm has to be profitable and no, there's no outside income at all is kind of a a farce. I mean, yeah. you don't you know throughout history you haven't really seen that. I see that as more of like a corporate banking view of farming, whereas the traditional farming um, view and the way we see it is more like farming is more of like a lifestyle. You have so many other benefits, like a benefit plan, you know, associated with your farm that would never work out on a corporate or a banking sheet, you know. And so I think that most people who enjoy farming, they, they understand that. So, but we also, you know, you have to pay your bills and you have to be able to um, continue farming. So that's important. So for us, we, you know, we, like I said. I'd, I'd say plan for a rainy day, but we, we have to plan for the days that aren't rainy. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we sell our products at um, a fair price. You know, we, we set our product price based upon, you know, what are things in the store? Uh, you know, how much does it cost for us to produce things? And, um, you know, you, you get a good handle pretty quickly on what the market will bear in your area. And the most important thing I ever learned from somebody about setting prices was you can always lower your price, but it's really hard to raise your price. So like for us seasonally, if we need to change our price or what, we would do it at the beginning of the next season. But in general, um, we've, we've been really good with the way we set our prices. Well, and Virginia mentioned, you know, you know, looking at like prices of stuff in the grocery store and, and, and that is a guideline, but I mean, you, you cannot buy our milk in, in a grocery store, certified organic, vat pasteurized, all our cows are tested for A2, 100% grass fed. I mean, you, you can't get that in the store. Um, but I mean, there is comparable product. You look at like organic Valley grass milk or, or, you know, similar organic products, um, it gives you at least a, a good starting place. And one of the things that people also ask us a lot of times is how many cows are you going to have? When are you going to grow? You know, uh, when you start using that second, you know, stall and all this other stuff. So I'll let Stacy take that too. Um, so we're at, we're at four right now and we're getting ready to dry off. We have five bred for next year and then we have three heifers from this year. So I mean, honestly, I think we would probably be most happy around six to eight, probably no more than that. And um, because, you know, we don't have any employees, we, we do have to balance, you know, the work that we do here on the farm. Uh, once a day milking has been a, a, a saving feature, not only saving time for us, obviously, but it saves in energy because we're not using all this hot water and running the vacuum pump for the second milking. 
Uh, it saves in chemicals, saves in milking gloves. I mean, so there is a lot of savings uh, with going once a day as well, but I think, I think six to eight is probably about where we would want to end up. Having a dairy farm is very time consuming, e even if it's just a small one like us, you know, we only have a, a handful of cows, but the processing and marketing adds a huge amount of time. Like processing and, and marketing is at least half of what we do. And right now it, it literally three days of the week it is just totally taken up by that. So um, that that's something, you know, oh, you only have four cows, you have hardly anything to do, but yeah, there's a lot of work in in, in processing it and, and getting it out to the consumer. So, I mean, it's about more about how much poop I want to deal with. <laughs> oh that's that that's the other that's the other thing that dictates our herd size is how much manure we want to deal with. <laughs> Although I love manure, it's great for the soil. Yeah. Like it, it is a valuable asset for sure, as much as we joke about it. I don't know if there's any other questions that we haven't answered. I mean we're not gonna like upload like spreadsheets with like specifics of our business or anything you know I think um, you know how much milk we make we you know how much milk we charge how much we charge for stuff we make enough money to to cover our bills and have a little left over yeah and uh, and also to cover bills while we're not milking during those about three months so that's about as much detail about our finances as you're gonna get from us <laughs> We are doing okay. <laughs> and as we get a couple more cows on and we have get more into cheese, cheese is a wonderful thing because, you know, we can hold it over longer. So, and it's tasty. And it's tasty. <laughs> That's the most important part. And um, then, uh, I mean, in an effort to improve efficiency, because that's important too, time is money. You know, we are putting in the pipeline this winter. And so, you know, we'll definitely be using both stalls then in the parlor and probably be getting done with milking a little quicker. Yeah. So. Well, I hope that that was some of the information that people were looking for, you know, general information about how you can make it with a few cows and how, how many cows do we want to have. And, you know, we encourage other people to get into dairy farming and into small farming. But just like any enterprise, you have to work hard, keep your debt low, and find ways to maximize your income. It's as easy as that. It's just that easy. <laughs> and you have to love what you do. Like, you, if you try to convince yourself, oh, you know, sheep farming is what I want to do, or, or this is going to be a, the biggest money maker, but you don't like sheep or bees or cows or whatever, you're just setting yourself up for failure because there's so many days that are hard to get through when there's a lot of work and if you're not you know truly passionate and believe in something then it you know it won't work no matter how how hard you push so that's the last thing i'll say all right well thanks for watching and thanks for joining us on the tomarosa we'll see you next time we're gonna go play with cows it's chore time bye we have to give our girls some little pellets these are little nutrient balancers and for Casey there's a little joint supplement for her here the girls are hi carnation here are our seven month old bebes hello bebes all right time for housekeeping